Hello all, my name is Adam Meyer. I'm one of the gastroenterology and hepatology fellows at the University of Cincinnati. And today I will be discussing how livers are allocated. In terms of a brief history, prior to 1997, um, the liver allocation system was really based on hospitalization status and was subject to manipulation. In 2000, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services published the final rule, which really set the standards for organ procurement and for specific transplant program requirements. In 2002, the MELD score was then approved by UNOS to be used for liver transplant allocation. And this is a score based on objective lab values. And this change of allocation led to sicker patients receiving liver transplants and reduction of weightless mortality. In 2020, the policy of acuity circles is implemented. And this is a new policy and I'll discuss how it works. And it was intended to address concerns regarding geographic variability in the MELD scores across the country and replace the current system of donor service areas. And this policy um, revolves around concentric circles of, uh, of the donor hospital. And we'll walk through a specific scenario in a moment of how it works. Uh, but I wanted to mention what's known as status 1A. Um, and this is a priority exception to the MELD score. And this is reserved for patients with acute liver failure um, who meet specific criteria and have a life expectancy of seven days or less without a liver transplant. So let's say there's a um, donor liver at a hospital. That is first gonna be offered to patients who are listed under status 1A, i.e. they have acute liver failure and they have a very short time to live and are at imminent risk of death. And this is gonna be offered within 500 nautical miles of that donor hospital. If that liver is then not used and it's not uh, given to a patient with status 1A, then it's going to follow this priority. It's going to be offered first to patients with high MELD scores, i.e. greater than 37, within 150 nautical miles of the donor hospital in a concentric circle. If it's not used, then it's going to be offered to the same patients with high MELDs within 250 miles and then within 500 miles all around the donor hospital. And that's why it's called acuity circles. It's based on concentric geographic circles around the donor hospital. If it's still not accepted, then it'll be uh, then it goes to patients with less less urgency, i.e., lower MELD scores. Again, starting from 150 miles around the donor hospital to 250 to 500 and so forth until um, the liver is uh, utilized. I wanted to mention briefly future direction. So the MELD 3.0 um, is currently being looked at, and this helps to adjust gender disparities uh, regarding liver transplantation. The MEL 3.0 includes gender and albumin um, in its current calculation. The other um, aspect of liver allocation and, and direction I wanted to mention is what's known as continuous distribution. And this intends to establish a single framework and ranks candidates based on factors including medical urgency, candidate biology, patient access, and placement efficiency. And this intends to remove boundaries that are in the current framework in order to increase equity for candidates. So these two changes, the MELD 3.0 and continuous distribution are something to keep an eye out for in the future. Thank you.